Thanks, Tim. Uh, welcome, everyone, to, to uh, Society Cabaret. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm, I'm Dave Schweisguth, uh, and thank you all very much for joining us tonight. Um, Tim covered the announcements, so let's get right to it. Let's uh, show you what we've got for you tonight. I don't know how to get the sound up there. Yep. Martha, please take it away. Before I met you, no one attracted me. No love thoughts worried or distracted me. My disposition was exempting me until you started in preempting me. And all the while, you've really been tempting me. Maybe you can tell me what we ought to do now that you got me going what you gonna do is it up to me or is it up to you what kind of game is this we've begun was it done just for fun we haven't met till i'm wrecked won't you tell me what you expect is this to be a case of kiss and never tell folly and farewell heaven or maybe hell which is it gonna be love or gin wife or sin let's begin now that you got me going what you gonna do is it up to me or is it up to you what kind of game is this we've begun? Was it done just for fun? Don't forget, since we met, there's no reason for vain regret. Is this to be a case of falling? Then I fell, off and farewell, heaven or maybe hell. Which is it gonna be, might have been, lose or win? Let's begin, let's begin. And that tune was used in the movie musical Roberta by Fred Astaire and his band when they were auditioning to be in Ginger Rogers' nightclub act. Guess he got the job. Thank you, Martha Crawford, for starting us off with the first of tonight's songs composed by Jerome Kern. Welcome, everyone, to Jerome Kern, First Among Giants. This is Society Cabaret's Songs and Their Stories, in which we look at the songs that, where, at where the songs that we love came from. Tonight, we're celebrating Jerome Kern. We have quite a few talented singers new to this series as well as some favorite regulars and a really beautiful and interesting lineup of songs. And I am very pleased to be able to present it all to you. Tonight's show will be a little different from the last few. For one thing, unlike the lyricists that we looked at in our last couple of shows, Jerome Kerd led a, led a fairly undramatic life. And he was a composer, so when there was drama, it's harder to see it in his work. But he was a genius. He was a huge innovator, both in the music that he wrote and the way he presented it in the theater. So that's what we're going to look at tonight, just what was so great about Jerome Kern. First, I should tell you a little bit about that undramatic life. He was born in Manhattan in 1885, a few years before Berlin, six before Cole Porter, and 10 or 15 before Richard Rogers and George Gershwin. His parents were German and Bohemian Jewish immigrants. His father was a very successful businessman, so Jerry was able to start playing piano when he was young. He convinced his father that he, was, that he would be a musician instead of following in his father's footsteps. There's a story about how his father sent him, sent him to buy two pianos from a factory for his business, and the salesman talked Jerry into buying 200, but his father managed to sell them, fortunately. After that, he got a good education in music in New York schools. While he was still in his teens, he started working as a song plugger. He demonstrated songs in stores that sold sheet music. 
and he quickly moved on to publishing his own songs. He often wrote songs to add to existing shows, which was a common practice at the time. And he also worked as the rehearsal pianist for those shows. Many of them were British shows that were being adapted to the American stage. Uh, London Musical Theater dominated America back then. And he soon found work in London, too. And that wasn't all he found there. Jacqueline DeMiro, why don't you tell us about it? OK, well, Kern wrote this song in 1905. It was his first hit in America, and by 1909, it had become a hit in the UK, too. In a pub outside London, he fell in love at first sight with the owner's daughter, and he found that she loved this song. Are you on the know why I am so very shy. I always was demure. I never knew what silly lovers do. No flirting I'd endure. In all my life I'd never kissed a man. I'd never winked my eye. But now at last I'm going to break the ice. So how do you like to try? How'd you like to spoon with me? How'd you like to spoon with me? Sit beneath an oak tree large and shady. Call me little tootsie wootsie baby. How'd you like to hug and squeeze? Dangle me upon your I'd spoon with you all day. You fascinate me so. You are so cute. You really are a beaut. Through life with you I'd go. If we were wed, our merry life would be one steady honeymoon. From 6 a.m. till 12 o'clock at night, why all we do to Joe Wicked for that lovely arrangement. And as for Kern and his girl, first he had to convince her that it really was him who had written it. And then I guess they spooned for a little while and then they married and they stayed married his whole life. Thanks so much, uh, Jacqueline DeMiro, everyone. By then, Kern was already a success. He had bought a partnership in his music publisher. He was beginning to write entire shows, not just interpolated songs. And he was a founder of ASCAP, the first organization that protected songwriters' rights. How Would You Like to Spoon With Me was a pretty typical song for a 1900s musical. It was a bouncy two-step like the dances at the time. But styles were changing fast. In 1907, The Merry Widow was a smash hit and Viennese operetta and waltzes took over. And then around 1911, a craze for dances like the Foxtrot took off. Kern was paying attention. Not long after that, he suggested to his orchestrator, he wrote songs, he didn't orchestrate them, he was a, he was a writer of individual songs. So what you're getting tonight is very much Kern's work. So he suggested to his orchestrator that he use saxophones in his score for the first time in American musical theater. And he also updated his own writing to match the trends. 
Let's have uh, Linda Cossett tell us about it. I can do that. Hi. Um, so the musical, The Girl from Utah, opened in London in 1913. And for its Broadway debut the following year, several songs were added to it that were not in the London production, including the one that I will be singing. Um, and this particular song, apparently it was the first love song in an American musical with four beats to the bar, more like a foxtrot than the two-step or the waltz. So, where'd they go? Hold on, guys. Okay. Don't know how it happened quite. May have been the summer night. May have been, well, who can say? Things just happen anyway. All I know is I said yes, hesitating more or less. And you kissed me where I stood, just like any fellow would. your hair are in a class beyond compare you're the handsomest man that one can see and when I tell them and I'm certainly going to tell them that you're the man whose wife one day I'll be they'll never believe me They'll never believe me That from this great big world You've chosen me They'll never believe me So first I want to thank Dave Austin For the arrangement and the track and also, I want to say, um, apparently this song set the style for love songs for nearly a century to come. And in fact, this and other current songs inspired George Gershwin. George Gershwin said that the best songs were in musical theater and not in Tin Pan Alley. Thank you, Linda. Then came World War I. Suddenly, Americans didn't want to see any more Austrian operetta, and British shows stopped coming to America. It left the way clear for American works. In 1915, the night before a voyage to England, Kern, who was a, was a real man about town back then, stayed up too late playing poker. He overslept, and the Lusitania sailed without him. How about that for an uneventful life? But his producer had been on time, and he was on board when the ship sank, and now Kern was available. He was asked to write shows to fit the Princess Theater. It was a new small theater on West 39th in New York. Unfortunately, it's long gone. He worked with uh, Guy Bolton, who was the librettist to my right, and... Um, with lyricists including P.G. Woodhouse, although, although he was very tall, he's sitting down in the picture right behind me. Um, the shows they wrote were set in America in the present day. 
They had much more realistic and coherent plots than the typical Edwardian show, and their songs were much more integrated with those plots. Kern said even then that he preferred to write a song when he knew the plot, which was not at all the typical practice at the time. And instead of preceding every song with a cue where the characters like drop everything and talk about why they're about to sing, the script should just lead up to the song and then the song should happen seamlessly. I'm afraid I couldn't think of how to make this show live up to current standard though. Uh, some of the princess theater shows are more successful than others, but as a group, they were a smash and they set up a standard that Porter, Rogers and Hart and the Gershwins and everyone else followed. Kern wrote plenty of forgotten songs for those shows, but in some of his songs, he kept pushing the envelope musically. Uh, there was a song in the show, Nobody Home, that used a 1-4 blues progress progression for the first time ever in Broadway. It doesn't sound special now because everyone does it. And it was one of those songs that I just, I just don't like that tells you how to do the dance that it is. That it is. So we're not going to do it tonight. But it was a big deal at the time. Uh, but here's Marilyn Cooney with another inventive song from a princess show. Starting again. This song was one of Kern's personal favorites. It's written around a constantly moving chord progression, which no one else was doing at the time. And instead of repeating itself like a typical Tin Pan Alley AABA song, every phrase is freshly composed. I find no rest from the pain that comes because I can't forget you. All of the time you come to haunt me again, just as you were when first I met you. I see you there, just as you used to be. So sweet and fair, you stand and gaze at me. Your form is youthful in its slenderness. You have your mother's smile of tenderness. I hear you laugh, it's like an April morn. I see you weep. A tiny pearl is born. I breathe your name and find the vision has flown. And I am all alone. Not far behind us lies the love we have known and I am all All right, thank you, Marilyn. Um, I was about to introduce uh, John Rosenthal with another song from the Princess Theater era, but I believe that he is having technical difficulties. So um, we'll give him time to get back on and maybe bring that song back later. Um, uh, so, and I'll just, uh, we'll just uh, uh, jump over, I guess. Um, the Princess Theater team lasted until about 1918, and Kern started working with other teams and other theaters. Uh, the show Rockabye Baby flopped, but the score was a success with critics. Robin Huntington, would you like to share one of its songs with us? There we go. Can you hear me? 
See if this reminds you of anything by anyone else. I used to think that men were all the same and different only as to name. I used to think that sentiment was nothing more than accident and that things just were that they had to occur and no one was to blame but now I know that they are not the same that love is somewhere in the game there's a certain someone that I'm anxious he should hear me Always has me worried and in trouble when he's near me. Ooh, you, some were born to make all they know for Lord, raising woe where only a laugh should grow. But there's one I know if he were near me now would cheer me. Ooh, not you. I used to think my strength of mind was fine, an independent spirit mine. I used to think I'd walk alone, do everything upon my own. And that sweethearts true were for girls that I knew and were not in my line. But now I know that I'm a clinging vine to stand alone I must decline there's a certain someone and I'm anxious he should hear me Ooh, you always has me worried and in trouble when he's near me Ooh, you some were born to But there's one I know if he were near me now would cheer me. was the rehearsal pianist for that show. Some Gershwin experts feel that he may have been influenced by Not You into writing Someone to Watch Over Me. The melody at the beginning is similar as are the harmonies throughout. And thank you to Scott Lacey for the lovely accompaniment. Thank you, Robin. Uh, uh, we're going to, before we move on, we'll jump back just a little, a little bit to the, uh, to, uh, another, uh, hit song from the Princess Theater, uh, before we move out of the teens, uh, John Rosenthal is back and we have just a little, a few years of time travel thanks to the, uh, thanks to internet hiccups. So take it away, John. This is the hit song from a show called Miss Springtime. Thank you, Dave. Uh, I have to say it's a thrill for me to finally be making my debut with Society Cabaret and to do it on a night honoring someone I love as much as as Mr. Jerome Kern is an embarrassment of riches for me. Now, one of the really special things about this particular tune is the way in which Jerome Kern has seamlessly melded the verse and the chorus so they're interconnected in such a way you almost don't feel the transition from one to the other. They all feel so unified. And I want to thank G. Scott Lacey for this beautiful accompaniment. <laughs> i 
Mother's castle that I've never been to yet. Filled with so much rainbow, though, in days that I forget. It has no stone battlements and beams are tall and tall. Its walls and its bars are the dust of the stars and its baits the gate of dreams. Come out there for a visit. I've lots of room for friends. And if you ask, where is it? It's where the rainbow ends. It's somewhere there is fairyland where there's never cloud or care. We'll have joy and laughter, mirth and song, and we'll all be happy as the day is long. In the shelter of my castle, of my castle in the air, everything is perfect that you'll find there when you go. Just beyond the Milky Way and where the moonbeams grow. No one ever worries, therefore everything goes right. The sky's always blue and no lover's untrue and your life's one long delight. Come out there for a visit I've lots of room for friends And if you ask where is it It's where the rainbow ends It's somewhere there is fairy land Where there's never cloud or care We'll have joy and laughter, mirth and song and we'll all be happy as the day is long in the shelter of my castle of my castle in the air thank you john i um before we move on, I actually need to uh, jump back to uh, say a thing about Robin's song, um, since we got the order uh, scrambled, that the, the arrangement that uh, Robin sang was the arrangement that Rebecca Luker sang on her album of Kern songs. Um, she also appeared in a revival of Showboat, and she contributed to four different collections of early and rare Kern. I, I think she did more than any other single performer to bring Kern's work into this millennium, and a lot of, a lot of that is behind this show. Um, so Kern had fabulous success in the teens, but the 20s were tough. He wrote a huge number of shows, 14 of them from 1920 to 1924, but only a couple of those were successes, and not many of the songs became hits but he still continued trying out new ideas in his compositions. Here's June Kammerling with one of them. Thanks, Dave. This is one of only a few songs that Kern wrote with a chorus in a minor key. But listen to what happens halfway through the chorus. And this um, accompaniment is uh, Stephanie Lynn Smith. Memory takes me back away to an early childhood day when I stood within a little wood as day was fading. I remember oh so well strolling in the dusky dell. I would thrill because the whippoorwill was serenading, trill, 
glowing while stars were rapidly filling the sky. Whippoorwill, I used to love to hear you call to me. Whippoorwill, I know he meant the world and all to me. When the sun had gone to rest, I could hear you from your nest. Whippoorwill, you used to whistle tenderly. And when the moon would swing across the branches of the trees above, you would sing your plaintive little melodies of love. Now though you're no longer near, in my dreams I still can hear Whippoorwill ever calling to me. While the dusky night bird flew to the evening rendezvous in the dell, I've heard the vesper bell so softly ring as its music died away and the sky began to gray. All was still, and then the whippoorwill would start his singing, trilling, while stars were rapidly filling the sky. Whippoorwill, I used to love to hear you call to me. Whippoorwill, I know he meant the world and all to me. When the sun had gone to rest, I could hear you from your nest. Whippoorwill, you used to whistle tenderly. And when the moon would swing, across the branches of the trees above. You would sing your plaintive little melodies of love. Now though you're no longer near, in my dreams I still can hear Whippoorwill ever calling to me. Someone asked Kern why he didn't write something more like a real whippoorwill call into the melody. Here's what a whippoorwill sounds like. He explained that it would sound too much like George M. Cohan's over there, over there. And now back to our fabulous host, Dave Schweisguth. Thanks, June, and thanks for that terrific song. <clears throat> uh, and then, in 1927, Showboat came to town. It broke ground in so many ways. Kern had the idea, which was new in musical theater, of taking a complex, interesting plot from a novel. Instead of rich kids having fun, it had a mixed-race cast trying to survive an unfair society and their own imperfect natures. Every song was in the show for a reason, to move along the plot. Songs recurred throughout the show, like leitmotifs in Wagner's operas. Uh, Kern had a bust of Wagner on his desk. And they used all kinds of American musical idioms, including the blues. Please welcome back Jacqueline DeMuro. So this song is the heart of the first act of Showboat. One of the two heroines, Julie, sings it to the other as though she was just saying what she wanted to say, but in song. Can't 
tell you why There ain't no reason why I should love that man It must be something that the angels done can be happy with just a sip of gin. I even loves him when his kisses got gin. Fish got a swim, birds got a fly. When he comes back, the day is fine, the sun will shine, he can come home as late as can be, home without him ain't no home to me, can't help loving that man. of the show, it's a real song that only black people know. Julie is mixed race, passing as white. So by singing that song, she gives herself away and has to leave the boat. Showboats first, oh, and thank you very much, uh, Jacqueline, for that, uh, for that song. Sh Showboats, Showboats first act is a tight drama. It takes place over a short time in Natchez, Mississippi. 
Its second act is very different. It covers several locations in many years. Several characters are performers, and Kern puts in all kinds of songs for them to perform, including a couple of popular songs from the 1890s that he didn't even write himself. He even stole a song from himself. Bill Cooper, let's hear it. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> this song had been cut from one of the Prince's shows, but by 1927 it sounded old-fashioned enough to be from the time of Showboat. Julie sings it in a club in Chicago. She's thinking of her husband who abandoned her after they had to leave the boat. I used to dream that I would discover the perfect lover. Someday I knew I'd recognize him if ever he came round my way. And I always used to fancy then he'd be one of the godlike kind of men with a giant brain and a noble head. Like the heroes bold in the books I've read. But along came Bill, who's not the type at all. You'd meet him on the street and never notice him. His form and face, his manly grace, are not the kind that you would find in a statue, and I can't explain. It's surely not his brain that makes me. I love him because he's wonderful, because he's just my bill. He can't play golf or tennis or polo or sing a solo or row. He isn't half as handsome as dozens of men that I know. And he isn't tall or straight or slim. And he dresses far worse than Ted or Jim. And I can't explain why he should be just the one, one man in the world for me. He's just my bill, an ordinary man. He hasn't got a thing that I can brag about and yet to be up on his knee so comfy and roomy seems natural to me and I can't explain it's surely not his brain that makes me thrill. I love him because he's, I don't know, because he's just my
Thank you so much, Bill. That was fabulous. Throughout the rest of his career, Kern, especially working with uh, Hammerstein, you can see behind me, tried to use songs the way that they use those songs in Showboat. Maybe even, we got a little flavor of that in this show tonight just now. They, they tried not just to integrate songs smoothly into the script, into the plot, but to have them exist in the world of the show and sometimes even to be plot points themselves. So many of his shows from then on were about music and he wrote shows more slowly and he crafted them more carefully. He and Hammerstein wrote Sweet Adeline about a, move, a woman who becomes a Broadway star. Uh, he and Otto Harbach wrote The Cat and the Fiddle. <clears throat> it's about two composers. One is, one is arty and one is jazzy. They start out fighting and they end up falling for each other and composing together. Here's Leslie Tchaikovsky with a song from that one. Okay, this, this song is one of the jazzy composer's hits. It's heard throughout the show. Uh, it plays on a record player as she's trying to, to get away from an amorous producer. Later on, the other composer doesn't believe that she actually escaped or that she wanted to. <laughs> Thanks to Scott Lacey for the accompaniment. She didn't say yes, she didn't say no, she didn't say stay, she didn't say go. She only knew that he spied her there, and then she knew he sat beside her there. At first there was heard not one little word, and clearly she took one sly little look, and something awoke and smiled inside. Her heart began beating wild inside, and what did she do? I leave it to you. She did just what you do to She didn't say yes, she didn't say no She very soon stood beside the chateau They lingered like two poor waifs outside For all she knew it was only safe outside in there was cold, and hair was warm. And <laughs> Murmur, I'm not afraid of ice. I only wish that I were made of ice. And what did she do? I leave it to you. Did just what you do to. say yes, she didn't say no, she didn't so stay, but knew she should go. She wasn't so sure that he'd be good, she wasn't even sure that she'd be good. She wanted to rest, all cuddled and pressed, a palpable part of somebody's heart. She wanted to be in rapport with him, but not behind a bolted door with him. And what did she do? I leave it to you. She did just what you do to. She didn't say yes, she didn't say no. Heaven was near, she wanted it so. Above her sweet love was beckoning. And yet she knew there'd be a reckoning. She wanted to climb, but dreaded to fall. So bided her time and clung to the wall. She wanted to act at libitum, but feared to lose her equilibrium. And what did she do? I leave it to you. She did just what you do to. Thank you, Leslie. Uh, I, I, uh, for, I forgot to make a note, but I remembered the fact that that was a, a rare song where Jerome Kern wrote the lyrics as well as the, as well as the music. I don't know whether that's because he felt especially strongly about getting that, that story across. During the Depression, Broadway declined, and Kern went to Hollywood like every other songwriter, like literally every songwriter you've ever heard of. Like they, spent, they all spent weekends at George Gershwin's house and playing golf together and stuff like that. <clears throat> the movies paired him up with a parade of top-notch top lyricists. 
and they made his music fresh and they helped him write hit after hit, especially Dorothy Fields. Their best film was Swing Time, which was a Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers movie. Please welcome Society Cabaret's own Fred and Ginger, Brett and Eileen Zamora. Thank you, Dave. Not only did Kern and Fields write several songs for this film that became standards, they set themselves up to give us a surprise at the end. Someday, when I'm awfully low, and the world is cold I will feel a glow just thinking of you and the way you look tonight Ah, you're lovely with your smile so warm and your cheeks so soft There is nothing for me but to love you Just the way you look tonight With each word your tenderness grows Tearing my fear apart And that laugh That wrinkles your nose It touches my foolish heart A fine oh, romance Whoa a fine breathless charm Romance you won't you please it cause I might as well play bridge with my old maid aunt the way you I haven't got a chance This is a fine romance A fine romance with no Kisses a fine romance, my friend. This is we should be like a couple of hot tomatoes, but you're as cold as yesterday's mashed potatoes. A fine romance with no clinches a fine romance with no pitches you're just as hard to land as the eel de france i haven't got a chance this is a fine romance That was Mr. Gary Newman on the piano. I think that deserved a little walk-off music. Imagine being so on top of your game that you could, that you could write a couple of hits 
and set them up to do counterpoint at the end, which they do do at the very end of the film. You have to watch it all the way to the end. Um, so that shows you just how skilled and smart Kern was, and it gives you a glimpse of, glimpse of his sense of humor. He looked like a fuddy-duddy. He looked a little bit too much like that guy in the Senate, but he was fun, and he was funny. He pulled practical jokes all the time, and many of his songs quote other songs just to make a joke. There's a whole another show in there, although it might be too much in the OOs and the teens. And he mystified generations of performers by, label, by labeling his chorus as burden, uh, or burthen, uh, spelled B-O-R-T-H-E-N, just to be different. You singers know what I mean. <clears throat> Another thing he did just to be different was to wear scarves instead of ties. Uh, what I'm wearing here is my best understanding of uh, Jerome Kern's manner of wearing a scarf. Uh, the only fabric we had around that worked was, um, it has, I think it's a, a Real Housewives of New Jersey fabric. It has guns and crucifixes. Um, so I get to, um, I get to uh, mention that uh, Kern actually spent some of his childhood in Newark. Um, anyway, uh, fun though he was, Kern didn't really want to do jazzy. <laughs> uh, my my, uh, my costumer is, uh, wants, wants me to let you all know that uh, she didn't buy this on purpose. Uh, fun though he was, <laughs> Kern, Kern really didn't want to do jazzy. He wanted to experiment with the use of music and film the way he did it in his stage shows. And that pulled him in the direction of operetta. He and Hammerstein wrote songs for a Western, High, Wide, and Handsome, that put it on a straight line from Showboat to Oklahoma. But uh, the director didn't share their vision, and the result wasn't that coherent a musical. It did give us a great song, and here's Linda Cossett to sing it. Here we go. Oh, he also didn't have to deal with technology. Um, now, Oscar Hammerstein wrote the lyrics to this song, which one could say he meant for a man to sing, but it was introduced in the film by the great Irene Dunn. So as they say, so much for Hollywood and artistic vision. Many men with lofty aims strive for lofty goals. Others play at smaller games, being simpler souls. I am of the latter brand, all I want to do is to find a spot of land and live there with you. Someday we'll build a home on a hilltop Shiny and new, a cottage that two can fill, and we'll be pleased to be called the folks who live on the hill. Someday we will be adding a thing or two, a wing or two. We will make changes as any family will, but we will always be. The folks who live on the hill Our veranda will command a view of meadows green The 
sort of you that seems you want to be seen And when the kids grow up and leave us We'll sit and look at the same old view Just we two Darby and Joan, who used to be Jack and Jill. The folks who like to be called what they have always been called. The folks who live on and again, I just want to thank Dave Austin for that beautiful arrangement and track. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. That was beautiful. Kern had already been composing for more than 30 years and he was starting to seem old-fashioned next to younger composers. But the songs he wrote with his old-fashioned skills made a perfect basis for jazz improvisation. It was ironic. Kern controlled his music as tightly as he could. He never, never changed a note to help out a lyricist. He supervised the public, published versions of his songs carefully, and when he could, he even prevented bands from rearranging his songs. The last thing he wanted was improvisers having their way with his work. But I'm afraid that we didn't bring John Rosenthal here today to respect Kern's wishes. A good song to improvise on has certain features. One is it has a melody that locks itself in your head and won't let go. So even when you're only singing snatches of it or not singing the melody at all as written, you can still hear it in your head. And it also demands a beautiful, complex chord arrangement, chord progression, that gives you so much to play off of. This song is second only to I Got Rhythm in the jazz canon of songs that jazz musicians love to improvise to. The rendition that I based my arrangement on is the, uh, the classic one, which was Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie. And I will be scat singing the riff that became the trademark of every every version of this song that was done by jazz musicians for many, many years. They made the template. I'm going to open with the verse, which is not normally done by jazz musicians, but it's a beautiful verse with a great lyric by Oscar Hammerstein II. So I'm going to sing that a cappella, and then I'm going to launch into my bebop version of this song. Enjoy. Time and again, I've longed for adventure. Something to make my heart beat the faster. What did I long for? I never really knew. Finding your love, I found my adventure. Touching your hand, my heart beats the faster. All that I want in all of this world is you. One, two, one, two, three, four. Spin it, boom, spin it, boom, spin it down. Spin it on, spin it on, spin it down. Spin it on, spin it on, spin it down. Spin it on, spin it down. Spin it on, spin it down. You are the promised kiss of springtime that makes the lonely winter seem long. You are the breath of hush of evening that trembles on the brink of a lovely song. You are the angel glow that lights the star, the dearest things I know are what you are. Someday my happy arms will hold you and someday I'll know the moment divine. All the things you are are mine. Zandaboo, la dee, 
sight, John. Thank you. And that's how a song becomes a standard. <laughs> that, uh, that song was in Very Warm for May. It was a musical about a young woman who runs away from home to act in the theater. In the original script, gangsters come after her, but she gets away when they hear that song and they're floored by its beauty. It's one of those very Kern moments where the song is part of the plot. But the producer hated the gangster plot and he had it written out before the show got onto Broadway. So of course it flopped. But Stephen Sondheim, who became, later became Hammerstein's protege, saw that show at the age of nine and he said later that show was, was what inspired him to become a composer. In 2010, 42nd Street Moon staged that show with something like the original script, so a lot of us got to see that wonderful scene on stage. Society Cabaret's own G. Scott Lacey was the musical director for that show. That happened to be his last with 42nd Street Moon. Greg McKellen, the artistic director, was the other person I want to mention who did so much to bring Kern's work up to today. Besides his work with 42nd Street Moon, who did a whole year of, of Kern pr productions, um, he produced three CDs of early and rare Kern. And I mentioned that Rebecca Luker contributed to two of those. And this show owes both of them a lot. Very Warm for May was Kern's last Broadway show. Back in Hollywood, he kept writing hit songs for films. He wrote the music for Cover Girl with Ira Gershwin. Please welcome back Eileen Zamora with a song from that film. Thanks, Dave. This song has been called Kern's last masterpiece. He was still experimenting. It doesn't have a bridge, just a chain of key changes. Skies were over 
cast But now the clouds have passed You're here at last Chills run up and down my spine Aladdin's lamp is mine The dream I dreamed was not denied me Just one look and then I knew That all I longed for long ago was you Just a whisper soft and low And midnight was a glow For oh, your words made midnight music Words that brought me such a thrill The echoes haunt me still You said there's only you And oh, there never was such music Darkened streets began to shine The moment midnight music Thank you very much. That was Kern's last big hit. Ira Gershwin said he made more money from that than from any song he wrote with George. And many thanks to Gary Newman for that lovely piano track. And thanks to Eileen for that lovely song. In 1945, Kern went back to New York to work on two projects. One was a musical about Annie Oakley. It was being produced by Hammerstein and Richard Rogers. The lyrics were going to be written by Kern's Hollywood colleague, Dorothy Fields. Marilyn Cooney, what was the other? The, the other project was a revival of Showboat. And this song was new for that production. It brightened up the end of the show in a scene where a young woman who had literally been born out of the show's melodrama looks forward to her future. Maybe it showed that Jerome Kern was feeling good about his future, too. I want to be no one but me. I am in love with a lover who likes me the way I am. He likes my faults. I'm not very bright. He's not very bright. He thinks I'm grand. And that's grand for me. He may be wrong, but if we get along, what do we care? Say we. When he holds me close, close as we can be. I tell the lad that I'm grateful and I'm glad that I'm nobody else but me. I have my faults and he likes my faults. I'm not very bright. Well, he's not very bright. He thinks I'm grand. 
that's grand for me. He may be wrong, but if we get along, what do we care, say we, when he holds me close, close as we can be. I tell the lad that I'm grateful and I'm glad that I'm nobody else but me. But it was the last song that Jerome Kern ever wrote. Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, Jonathan Francis will take the story from here. Hi. Um, OK. Um, one day near the end of 1945, Kern collapsed on the street. He lay in the hospital for days. He was surrounded by his family and colleagues. He had conscious moments, but he lapsed into a coma. Oscar Hammerstein tried to get Kern to respond. He lifted up the flap of Kern's oxygen tent and sang this song in his ear. They had written it together. It was one of Kern's favorites. I make up things to say on my way to you. On my way to you, I find things to say. I can write poems too when you're far away. When you're far away, I write poems too. But when you my lips go dry when you are near. I only sigh, oh dear. I've told every little star just how sweet I think you are. Thanks, Jonathan. That song was from Kern's second to last stage show, Music in the Air. That, that show is Kern and Hammerstein's biggest success in weaving their songs for the plot. Within the show, the song is actually written by one of the characters, and part of the story is about their efforts to sell it, get it on stage. Here's Trent Morant with another song from that show to send us home. 
Now, this song is used two ways in that show. First, a man sings it to charm the woman he's interested in. Then she realizes that he sings a song to every girl he meets. <laughs> and he knows that she's on to them, so they sing it together. <laughs> well, let's flip the script on this and just make it about Jerome Kern. <laughs> let's hope this works. I hear music when I look at you, a beautiful theme of every dream I ever knew. Down deep in my heart, I hear it play. I can feel it start, then it melts away. I hear music when I touch your hand. A beautiful melody from some enchanted land. Down deep in my heart, I hear it say, Is this the day? Now, I alone have heard this lovely strain. I alone have heard this glad refrain. It be forever inside me. Why can't I let it go? Why can't I let you know? Why can't I let you know the song my heart would sing? The beautiful rhapsody of love and youth and spring. The music is sweet and the words are true. This song is you you know i need a dance partner for this oh yes i can just see it on that floor with my tuxedo on <laughs> hey why can't I let you know the song my heart would sing? A beat rhapsody of love and youth and spring. The music is sweet and the words are true. The song is you. Yes! <laughs> Oh yeah, I didn't want that to end and I don't want this show to end. Thank you very much, Trent. But, uh, <laughs> but that's it, that's our show. So big, big thanks to every one of our fantastic singers and to uh, Tim in the booth uh, who makes all this run so smoothly. I just pasted a link to the program into the chat. You can click on it right now to get a copy. If you have any trouble doing that, just grab me afterwards. And we'll leave the Zoom session running for a few minutes so everyone can congratulate the singers and say goodbye to one another. Uh, we will do this again when we have a real world venue sorted out. So if you have any suggestions for a future show, or if you'd like to be in one and you're not already on my list, then let me know. Thank you everyone very, very much and good night. <laughs>